लिंक मैंने भेजा अभी ऑन कर लो देखो
Hello.
Good morning everyone. My name is Dr. Jaya Vishwas. The title of my seminar is Non-Gonococcal Urethritis and Cervicitis and Update due to Bacterial, Viral and Parasitic Colic. My moderator is Dr. Mega Vishwal Nam. So I will be explaining urethritis introduction part, causes of non-gonococcal urethritis, cervicitis introduction, epidemiology, syndromic management and challenges, and causes of uh, urethritis and cervicitis due to bacteria, virus and parasites and drug resistance in mycoplasma genitalia, recurrent or persistence of non-gonococcal urethritis, and acute urethral syndrome. So, urethritis is an inflammation of urethra, usually caused by sexually transmitted infectious pathogens. The clinical finding of urethritis is urethral discharge, itching, burning in the anterior urethra, and dysuria. Clinical examination and laboratory findings in urethritis are mucoid or mucopurulent or purulent discharge on physical examination. In gram staining of urethral secretion, there will be 
more than 2 WBC per oil emulsion phase. Alternate dye can be used methylene blue and gentian violet. Uh, in presumed gonococcal infection, in gram staining, there will be gonococcal, uh, there will be gram negative in intracellular diplococci. In positive, uh, there, in lab findings, there will be positive leukocyte asterisk test. On first void urine or microscopic examination of the sediment from front first void urine demonstrating more than 10 WBC per high power phase. So, uh, urethritis can be gonococcal and non gonococcal urethritis. The gonococcal cause of urethritis is Neisseria gonorrhea and non gonococcal uh, urethritis mainly caused by chlamydia trachomatis. Other causes are uh, called non chlamydia non gonococcal urethritis. So, non gonococcal urethritis is established with the absence of gram negative diplococci in the presence of polymorphonuclear leukocyte in gram stain smear. Most common genital tract syndrome in the men is non gonococcal urethritis. Most non gonococcal urethritis pathogens are difficult to identify with conventional culture methods. So, empirical treatments are frequently used in non gonococcal urethritis due to long time required to obtain culture results. Causes of non gonococcal urethritis are bacterial, viral, and parasitic. The established causes are chlamydia trachomatis, mycoplasma genitalium, urea plasma urealiticum, and viral causes are adenovirus serotype 37, HSV1, and HSV2. Parasitic causes causes trichomonas vaginalis. There are emerging uh, causes of non gonococcal urethritis, which is the Sneetia species, which is an anaerobic bacteria, and viral causes and adenovirus serotype 56. Uh, also can cause non gonococcal urethritis, but possible uh, non gonococcal urethritis causes are mycoplasma homogenes and urea plasma plasma. Here, uh, there is a, a overlap between clinical picture of gonococcal urethritis and non gonococcal urethritis. So, there is some difference uh, due to in, in, uh, in, in clinical picture, incubation period of gon non gonococcal urethritis is uh, lesser, and in non gonococcal urethritis, it is longer. It is uh, uh, four days. Mean it is uh, uh, minimum. Uh, it mean is four days. One to fourteen days is the incubation period for gonococcal urethritis, and two to thirty-five days in non-gonococcal urethritis. And urethral discharge uh, mostly purulent in gonococcal urethritis. And in uh, non-gonococcal urethritis, there is thin, cloudy, fluid, purulent flax, which is mucopurulent in this uh, mucopurulent. Uh, combination of discharge and dysuria is common with gonococcal urethritis, but appearance of one feature without other is more frequent in non-gonococcal urethritis. Symptom onset are abrupt in gonococcal urethritis, but it is less acute and milder and variable uh, with non-gonococcal urethritis. Uh, so, there is a very important because of this uh, uh, overlapping of clinical picture, uh, we need this. Uh, lab diagnosis with gram staining. Gram staining is uh, positive with uh, positive with gonococcal urethritis in which we can see gram negative intracellular diplococci which is seen in 95% of symptomatic gonococcal urethritis but in non gonococcal urethritis there will be no gram negative intracellular uh, diplococci only polymorphonuclear cell will be there. So, gram stain is very important. Uh, uh, for diagnosis of uh, gonococcal and non gonococcal urethritis. So, uh, before that, uh, uh, according to CDC, the new, uh, according to CDC, the cutoff value is dropped by 2 uh, polymorphonuclear cell per hyper high power field because taking the cutoff value for positivity as 5 uh, in gram stain smell will yield false negative outcomes in the diagnosis of non gonococcal urethritis. So, there is a study, Serial M et al., which was uh, done by done in 2018 there is uh, there is they have reported the sensitivity of gram stain smear which is 55.6 percent when the threshold was taken as more than 5 polymorphonuclear cell per high power field whereas sensitivity increased by 92.6 percent when the threshold was lowered to more than, uh, lower to 2 pmnl uh, polymorphonuclear cell per high power field in 2017 european association of urology guideline they have uh, decided the threshold 5 uh, polymorphonuclear cell per high power field for pyogenic urethritis and there is no recommendation about the value of gram stain smear in the non gonococcal urethritis cases. Cervicitis. Cervicitis is an inflammation of the columnar epithelium of endocytic often associated with urethritis in, uh, in partner. 
causes are similar to urethritis which is angonuriae, chlamydia, trachomatis, M genitalia and the clinical feature of cervicitis are abnormal vaginal discharge. So, according to CDC 2015 STD treatment guideline, clinical examination and laboratory findings, findings with cervicitis are purulent or mucopurulent endocervical exudate in endocervical canal or swab specimen, sustained endocervical bleeding easily induced by gentle passage of a cotton swab through the cervical os and there will be leukuria, it means more than 10 WPC per high power field with uh, mm, uh, cervical exudate. Epidemiology of urethritis. Non-gonococcal urethritis is mostly due to chlamydia trachomatis which is 48.1% and there is uh, next it is due to uh, M genitalia. It is causes 22.7% of the non-gonococcal urethritis and Urea, urea, lyticum, uh, uh, urea plasma urea lyticum which is causing 90.5% of the non-gonococcal urethritis and human adenovirus is also there. It is causing 16.2% of non-gonococcal urethritis. Others are explained in this diagram. And epidemiology of cervicitis. There is uh, in cervicitis uh, organism detected mainly chlamydia trachomatis which is 17%. And gonococcal, uh, gono here it is mentioned that gonococcal and non-gonococcal both are mentioned. Gonococcal uh, cervicitis is caused by 13%. Others are caused by non-gonococcal urethritis in which uh, no organism are found in 35% cases. But 7% cases are still um, due to uh, chlamydia trachomatis. And uh, uh, these are also caused by uh, the uh, trichomonas vaginalis mainly. Uh, causing cervicitis in 10% of cases and uh, mycoplasma genitalium causing 8% of non-gonococcal cervicitis and with co-infection with gonococcal cervicitis and chlamydotrachomatis it is 7%. It, cervicitis is also caused by uh, HSV virus which is due to uh, which is in present in 5% of cases. So in, the diagram, in this diagram we have explained the epidemiology of mucoporinine cervicitis. Uh, there are Indian studies regarding non gonococcal urethritis. A clinical etiological study of urethritis in men attending sexually transmitted disease clinical at a tertiary hospital which is done by NIAC et al. Uh, in 2017 they have, to, uh, they have taken 100 cases where they found gonococcal urethritis cases uh, which were 45% uh, uh, gonococcal urethritis, 38% with chlamydia trachomatis and 2 patients uh, with trichomonas uh, vaginalis. And there is next study uh, which is the which is done by our ma'am, the then ma'am, uh, urea plasma serobars and their antimicrobial susceptibility in patient of infertility and genital tra uh, tract infection. They have find, found urea plasma serobars uh, in 25.8% of genital tract infection and 28% in infertile, infertile women. In next study, high prevalence of mycoplasma genitalium in men who have sex with men it is a cross-sectional study in which they found 14% um, which is 30.4% uh, 30 uh, caused uh, non-gonococcal urethritis uh, due to M genitalium, 21.7% caused by chlamydia trachomatis and 10.8% were co-infected with both mycobacterium gen uh, genitalium, my, uh, sorry mycoplasma genitalium and chlamydia trachomatis. Here is another study. Uh, the prevalence and clinical significance of urethritis and cervicitis in asymptomatic people by use of multiplex polymerase chain reaction. Here they explain the uh, symptom. Uh, there are mean, there are a percentage which are not having any symptoms with uh, these infections. So uh, which is about 7.1 percent uh, uh, in about 7.1 percent in uh, prevalence. The prevalence rate of uh, these are uh, ma mainly with chlamydia trachomatis, then miseria gonorrhea, then mycoplasma genitalium, and then urea plasma urethritis. With these symptoms, uh, we uh, we have the syndromic management with urethral discharge by NACO guideline. So whenever the patient comes with urethral discharge. And we can suspect the gonorrhea, chlamydial infection and trichomoniasis. So causative agent we have already discussed. Patient will come with urethral discharge, pain or burning and sexual exposure uh, of either partner including high risk. So here we will examine for urethral meatus for redness and swelling 
and mutual discharge if there is any passage if a male is not uh, presenting with passage uh, then massage of the uh, uterus should be done then laboratory investigations uh, to be done with uh, gram staining and and non gonococcal urethritis uh, will be uh, uh, decided with it is gram uh, gram staining will be decided if it is gonococcal or non gonococcal so if patient is presenting with urethral discharge will be uh, managing this patient with uh, uh, azithromycin 1 gram od stat and tablets with them 400 mg od stat uh, according to napo guideline if is if patient is presenting with cervical discharge uh, the posit positive or positive organism will be thinking about trichomonas vaginalis uh, miseria gonorrhea clomida trichomatum trichomonas vaginalis and herpes simplex virus so the patient will come come with menstrual history to rule out pregnancy uh, we have to take the history uh, to rule out the pregnancy the nature of the discharge and any burning itching uh, is there or not so examination should be done uh and lab is in investigation should be done for differentiation of, of this uh, positive organism uh, cervical discharge if patient is presenting with cervical discharge will be using this gray kit for uh, discharge also so here uh, this non gonococcal urethritis uh, the challenges are uh, emerging and known novel pathogen which are recently diagnosed with emergence of um, newer advanced newer techniques to diagnose it relevance of the syn syndromic management is uh, uh, so uh, the next challenge is relevance of syndromic manage is essential because limitation of syndromic management is there there is chance of missing the asymptomatic cases and uh, there will be uh, there will be non satisfactory vaginal discharge so resulting so result with uh, uh, assessment of the syndromic management should be done periodically uh, then emergence of drug resistance in the mycoplasma genitalium these are the challenges with non gonococcal urethritis bacterial causes uh, bacterial causes and now i will be explaining the bacterial causes the most common chlamydia trachomatis which is a gram negative obliquate intracellular bacterial uh, which is mainly causing non gonococcal urethritis are cirrhosis uh, d2k the predominant and most well known causes of non gonococcal urethritis are mainly uh, mainly causing 20 to 50% of non gonococcal urethritis uh, it is most common cause of acute urethritis in sexually active young people population if chlamydia trachomatis is causing infection in men the men will be having uh, the features uh, mostly they will be having mucoid discharge dysuria but uh, more than 50% of cases also are asymptomatic incubation period with chlamydia trachomatis is 5 to 10 days complications can be there with uh, men reiter syndrome epididymitis and infertility infection in women cause it causes cervicitis urethritis and proctitis complication will be pelvic inflammatory <laughs> disease and endometritis salpingitis reiter syndrome and fitz hugh curtis syndrome here the pathogenesis of chlamydia trachomatis is there firstly the infectious in elementary body is attached and enter enter to uh, the target cell and target uh, tar there is the formation of the reticulate body in the cytoplasm of the target cell and then there will be binary fusion of the reticulate bodies and these reticulate bodies then uh, will be uh, then will be maintaining the elementary bodies in the large cytoplasm inclusion and these uh, elementary body will be infecting again the next cell next bacterial cause is mycoplasma genitalium which is emerging causative agent for uh, both male and female ngu facultative intracellular pathogen uh, it is facultative intracellular pathogen the it it shows gliding motility it has flask or bottle shaped uh, structure with a prominent truncated terminal portion which can be seen in electron microscopy Uh, genetic variation it can show, show which is uh, shown uh, which is phase variation or which can be antigenic variation this antigenic variation mainly uh, avoid antibody recognition of the mycoplasma genitalium by the host uh, transmission by sexual route uh, is there mainly vaginal intercourse anal intercourse and oral genital most common symptom is prurient urethral discharge and dysuria prevalence in non chlamydia non gonococcal urethritis Uh, patient with uh, mycoplasma genitalium is 18 to 45 percent. 
here is the pathogenesis of m genitalium infection n genitalium uh, adhesion uh, adhere to epithelial surface with the help of uh, adhesion mgpa protein on the tip of the polar cell intracellular then intracellular localization of the m genitalium happens this m genitalium uh, produce variable surface lipoprotein which helps in evasion of the host defense and it also produce h2o2 superoxide which uh, damage the tissue and the production of TNF alpha interleukin 1 alpha interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 6 stimulate and suppress the immune cells which can suppress the macrophages monocyte and lymphocyte and a persistence of infection is there this is association of the Euro urogenital mycoplasma uh, mainly mainly uh, in mycoplasma genital the uh, features will, uh, will be there with urethritis and cervicitis but M. hominis generally uh, doesn't cause cervicitis, but there are few cases. And urea plasma also can cause service, uh, urethritis, um, urethritis mainly. Uh, urea, urea plasma, urea laticum is associated with urethritis, but parvum is not uh, associated, which is also uh, uh, confused. Uh, there are cases uh, with urea plasma parvum. Uh, so it is to deter, uh, it is to um, find out that there are cases of urea plasma par urea plasma parvum with urethritis or cervicitis are there or not. Next bacterial cause is urea plasma urea laticum, which is formerly known as urea plasma biovar two, which is an opportunistic pathogen uh, and also a common cell in the urethra. Prevalence uh, of urea plasma urea laticum causing acute urethritis is 5 to 26 percent. Uh, it is uh, growth of the uh, growth in the culture medium with urea plasma urea, urea laticum and urea plasma parvum cannot be differentiated in culture. So gold standard uh, uh, technique for isolation or identification of uh, urea plasma urea laticum is nucleic acid amplification test or quantitative PCR have to be done for demonstrating micro, uh, microbial load and avoiding the false positive result because it is a common cell in the, uh, in the gen uh, genitalia of uh, male and female. So, uh, urea plasma urea laticum needs quantitative PCR. Complication of uh, urea plasma urea laticum can be infertility, infertility in men and drug of choice for the treatment is dox doxycycline. Then mycoplasma hominis. It is also a probable cause of acute urethritis. It is common cell in uh, urethral flora, flora in the 9% of healthy individuals. Prevalence in men with acute uh, urethritis is 3%, which is confirmed by quantitative PCR because it is a common cell. Uh, it is seen as a cause of co-infection or secondary cause of infection due to disrupted flora. Serious pathogen uh, in immunosuppressed patients. Most patients are asymptomatic due to its low inflammatory characteristic considered as a urethritis cause under high microbial load. So quantitative PCR analysis plays an important role in the diagnosis and it also can show microbial load. Complications are infertility. Doxycycline uh, is a drug of choice for the mycoplasma. Here it is uh, showing the colonies of mycoplasma huminis and Mycoplasma hominis and Uroplasma urolyticum on differential agar media A7. This is the colony of uh, Mycoplasma hominis and this is the colonies of Uroplasma urolyticum. And this is the dying wet stain agar block. Here it is shown Mycoplasma uh, hominis and Uroplasma urolyticum. Uroplasma pavum. Uroplasma pavum uh, has few evidence uh, for uh, causing acute urethritis causes. It is recognized as uh, BioVar 1. It may remain as common cell in the urethra. Uh, in a case control study uh, by Frolon M. et al., they have shown bacterial load of urea plasma parvum was found to be similar both in non gonococcal urethritis group and the control group. Uh, in recent uh, meta analysis evalu evaluating the case controlling studies, urea plasma parvum shown to be not associated with non gonococcal urethritis. So, similarly, in another meta uh, analysis, uh, on, there is uh, there is they found that no relation was found between male infertility and uh, urea plasma power so uh, evidence uh, should uh, evidence are actually needed for actually uh, um, telling that that urea plasma parvum is a cause of acute urethritis uh, uh, non gonococcal urethritis next bacterial cause of uh, Non-gonococcal urethritis is leptotrichia and Smithia species, which is an anaerobic bacteria. 
it is called it is causing 15% of men with idiopathic urethritis and uh, significantly associated with non gonococcal urethritis leptotrichia and clethia species were detected in 62% of women with pelvic inflammatory disease this leptotrichia first identified in 1995 which is uh, detected in women with postpartum bacteremia leptotrichia clethia species was significantly found associated with urethritis in 15.3% and quantitative taxon directed polymerase chain reaction done for the detection of leptotrichia species among treated cases doxycycline was more effective than azithromycin for clinical cure of men with leptotrichia species here it is the study is study published in um, published in 2013 their bacterial vaginosis associated bacteria in the men uh, was detected association of leptotrichia snethia species with non gonococcal urethritis was uh look that here they have taken heterosexual men 16 years or older attending a sexual transmitting disease uh, in which they have found they have found a sample with a sample negative for chlamydia trachomatis neisseria gonorrhea trichomonas vaginalis mycoplasma genitalium and urea plasma urethritis basically idiopathic non gonococcal urethritis uh, in which they have found uh, 15% of cases positive with uh, leptotrichia snethia species for non gonococcal urethritis like lab diagnosis for uh, bacterial causes sample can be taken urine first word urine uh, urethral swab endo cervical swab uh, so there is point of care test microscopy should be done gram staining methylene blue and gentian violet for the gonococcal and non gonococcal identification of the cause and direct demonstration can be done immunofluorescence techniques are there Uh, culture is not uh, done routinely because uh, these uh, mycoplasma can grow uh, take more time so these are not routine uh, tests uh, mycoplasma urea plasma can be grown on uh, can be can be uh, grow, uh, can be seen in pplo uh, and uh, growth agar and sp sp for sucrose phosphate medium and main laboratory diagnosis is done by nucleic acid amplification test which i will be explaining in later slide molecular tests which are done for identification of uh, this organism it can be in house uh, uh, test and it can be commercial test for chlamydia trachomatis the target genes are cryptic plasmids or urea plasmids species target genes are ureas and uh, mycoplasma genitalium the target gene is mgpa p140 viral causes viral causes uh, in viral causes herpes simplex virus type 1 and type 2 are responsible for the acute urethritis 3.8% prevalence uh, is there for herpes simplex virus 2.9% with the hsp1 and 0.9% with hsp type 2 uh, if the patient is having if the uh, patient is having unprotected oral sex history uh, with, they can uh, basically herpes simplex virus uh, patient uh, unprotected oral sex history will be there most commonly clinically urethritis accompanied by neonatitis in male patient with hsp positive acute urethritis unlike genital hsp infection herpetic lesions were found only in 26.3% of the patient absence of classical vascular herpetic lesion cannot eliminate hsp urethritis hsp urethritis should be taken into con consideration due to the fact that mononuclear leukocytes are more common in gram cell smear instead of polymorphonuclear leukocytes and treatment with hsp simplex virus is valacyclovir and famcyclovir next cause is adenovirus uh, limited number of the studies are there uh, for causing uh, non gonococcal urethritis here uh, the patient will be having orogenital transmission and prevalence of the acute, acute urethritis with adenovirus is 4% characteristic symptoms frequently accompany conjunctivitis neonatitis along with the urethritis urethritis symptoms uh, in the study mehmet serier at all they have shown 102 cases with meatitis and conjunctivitis found to be accompanying 89% 89% of the cases uh, in these patient uh, the gram stain smear will be having uh, mononuclear cells so we have to suspect the uh, adenoviral uh, viral causes also because they are actually um, self limited self self limiting uh, infections so most of the adenovirus uh, will be treated uh, self um, uh, spontaneously Uh, with immunocompetent patients and adenovirus uh, can be adenovirus can be detected as 
a nucleic acid amplification why nucleic acid amplification test there are few cases uh, where they have found the adenovirus uh, causes with the uh, non gonococcal urethritis uh, in this report they have found two cases uh, one patient with 55 year old men came uh, with neuritis and intense conjunctival hyper hyperemia in this patient they have found uh, adenovirus type 37 and next case uh, the patient presented with dysuria uh, and then he have present he had um, uh, mucoid discharge and with uh, uh, neuritis here he, they also found this uh, adenovirus dna uh, type 37 so we should uh, know that there are viral causes so we cannot uh, exclude this without um, exclude this because these are spontaneously uh, recovered cases so antibiotics are not needed here so we have to uh, diagnose properly so that uh, we don't we don't overuse the antibiotic so urethral smears are very important in the diagnosis of adenovirus induced urethritis here exclusively gram stain smear will be showing monocytes uh, basically if uh, monocytes are there we have to suspect uh, urethral uh, cervicitis urethral cervicitis and urethritis uh, in another study they have found uh, a case of urethritis is caused by human adenovirus type 56 which is a novel uh, adenovirus which is causing urethritis this study was done in 2012 Now protozoan causes. Trichomonas vaginalis is the uh, sex, uh, protozoan cause, uh, which is causing non-monococcal urethritis. More common in developing countries. The cases are two to thirty. The prevalence of uh, non-monococcal urethritis by Trichomonas vaginalis is two to thirteen percent. It can be diagnosed by no, uh, nucleic acid amplification test. Uh, most of the infections are asymptomatic, basically seventy to eighty-five percent, and it can be treated by metronidazole. Infection in the female with Trichomonas vaginalis causes uh, vaginal discharge, copious greenish odor, and uh, vaginal discharge which is copious greenish and odorful, and then edema and erythema is there, and uh, strawberry uh, cervix is there. If if uh, Trichomonas vaginalis infection happens in pregnancy, premature rupture of the membranes there, and premature birth birth is common. So in fact, if Trichomonas vaginalis causing infection in men, it is mainly uh causing urethritis pathogenesis to establish infection in urogenital tract trichomonas vaginalis penetrates the mucous layer of um, mucous layer to gain the access of underlying epithelial cell where parasites attach resulting in tissue damage and inflammation sample for detection of trichomonas vaginalis uh, in women uh, same vaginal and cervical secretion are taken for men urinal urine sediments and urethral discharge and semen can be taken My, in microscopy we will find specimen should be exam, uh, we will find uh, motile parasites with uh, polymorphic nuclear cells exhibiting twitching or pucking motility we can also culture uh, the organism gold standard is the culture method growth culture can be done in diamonds media and hollanders media and in pouch system there is also uh, also is uh, effective as diamond media cell culture method can be done uh, mccoy cell line is used uh, to improve the yield multiple specimen in the men can be used to inoculate a single culture treatment recommendation for trichomonas trichomonas vaginalis uh, recommendation are metronidazole 2 g orally in a single dose Uh, or tinidazole can be given 2 g orally in a single dose alternative regi uh, regimens are metronidazole 500 mg orally twice a day for 7 days follow up should be done uh, because uh, reinfection with the uh, trichomonas vaginalis is very common because higher rate of reinfection is there within 3 months it is 17% and so management of the partners is also in, uh, in important here so follow up and management with trichomonas vaginalis should be done now i can i will be explaining drug resistance in mycoplasma genitalium mycoplasma hominis basically resistant to uh, sorry mycoplasma hominis uh, mycoplasma genitalium uh, is uh, treated with azithromycin uh, which is a metrolide now the in, um, 
emergence of resistance with the macrolides is there we can use moxifloxacin uh, in mycoplasma genitalium uh, where we are using azithromycin which is inherently resistant in uh, resistance uh, with uh, mycoplasma hominis so uh, with increase or emergence of the resistance of mycoplasma there are treatments uh, which is which is uh, which is given uh, mainly moxifloxacin there are other regimens zosamycin pristinamycin solithromycin in danish study mycobacterium genitalium macrolide resistance was found almost 40% uh, in the specimen so uh, the uh, emergence of resistance is uh, very higher in mycoplasma genitalium so we have to manage this patient uh, promptly european guidelines show uh, the Euro european guidelines are made for management of uh, mycobacterium mycoplasma genitalium in uncomplicated cases macrolide if there is macrolide resistance we can there are uncomplicated cases and complicated cases if macrolide resistance is not there we'll be tre we'll be treating this patient with azithromycin 500 mg 500 g initial dose followed by 250 mg per day for 4 days if these patients are macrolide resistant we should giving them moxifloxacin 400 mg od for 7 to 10 days if the patient uh, is com come with a complicated uh, non gonococcal urethritis the patient should be treated with moxifloxacin 400 mg od for 14 days here important considerations are uh, extra genital screening should be done because these patient will be having a uh, actually these patients can act as a hidden reservoir and screening is uh, mainly important for preventing the transmission of the uh, pathogens and there is need of treatment of partner so that transmission can be uh, transmission can be reduced so um, we have we have to do extra genital screening mainly rectal pharyngeal site and uh, so that we can identify the reservoir now i will be explaining the current or persistent non gonococcal urethritis uh, some patients continue to have evidence of urethritis after getting treated with non gonococcal urethritis in which m genitalium most common cause of recurrent non gonococcal urethritis uh, we can suspect trichomonas vaginalis also if the trichomonas vaginal uh, the area is endemic for trichomonas vaginalis in this case doxycycline should be prescribed as per uh, in this case if the uh, patient were treated with doxycycline uh, therapy we can switch to azithromycin 500 mg or 1 g per day then 250 mg once daily for 4 days uh, we can add a uh, metronidazole 4 to 500 mg twice daily for 5 days if the patient were treated with azithromycin first then we have to give doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 7 days plus metronidazole 400 uh, to 500 mg twice daily for 5 to 7 days acute uh, urethral syndromes basically acute urethral syndrome is a symptomatic patient with a bacteriuria which is um, uh, which is uh, less than which is not significant actually uh, among the 185 symptomatic women and 89 symptoms we control there were symptoms but there were no bacteriuria significant bacteriuria but they have found some coliform bacilli fastidious organism and staphylococcus species and they have also find, found urea plasma urea latica so summary of this uh, uh, seminar is uh, there is novel etiological agents like uh, uh, adenovirus and smithia group Uh, so we have to identify these uh, causes uh, promptly and their uh, treatment should be done because adeno like adenovirus they doesn't need the treatment uh, uh, for because they are uh, spontaneously uh, resolved uh, infection so there is uh, also need of periodic assessment of syndromic management for uh, sexually transmitted infection so that because of there is a changing epidemiology is uh, there is a view there is a changing epidemiology so periodic assessment is required rising macrolide resistance in mycoplasma genitalium is also uh, a concern so uh, 
and non monoclonal urethritis treatment may be guided by etiological diagnosis where possible so that we can uh, direct the treatment uh, as the proper as the proper course thank you so much right dr jaya uh, some of your questions are dr ashish has asked you that uh, in gram thing in which pathogen do you see monocytes uh, adenovirus herpes adenovirus infections and uh, herpes virus infection they will be monocytes Yeah. Uh, Dr. Rojan uh, has asked you fungal etiology for non-gonococcus virus. Ma'am, can we do? No, your topic was only bacterial. Right. Okay. Dr. Rojan has also asked you why you need to differentiate uh, Europlasma parvum from Eurypetes. Uh, because Europlasma parvum is basically common cell, so we cannot treat without knowing that they are pathogen or not. So we have to isolate it first.